us here at Napanee Baptist Church. And uh, God has been good to us this past week. And we would just, just want to celebrate His goodness and celebrate His grace in our lives. mercies never fail and his grace comes to us in so many different ways let's pray to him and thank him for this heavenly father we thank you we praise you we honor your name because you alone are worthy you are our god you have provided salvation for us through jesus christ when we accept him into our lives, you enable us to have a relationship with you. And Father, we ask that this morning that you would speak to us, that you would help us to understand your ways, your plans, what you have in store for us, and how to honor you and to honor others. And Father, we thank you, we praise you, we honor you, we give you the glory that is due your name, for it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. 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 Well, folks, now we have a chance to sing, and it's wonderful to be a part of the family of God, to be invited to the inner sanctum of God's family. Let's stand and sing. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. so good.
because he has proven himself faithful that we can put our trust in him. He is our faithful God. He is our faithful guide. He is our faithful healer. He is faithful in all the ways that we need. face. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you today for the goodness that comes from your hand, for all of the blessings, for all of the, the provision that you have given to us each and every day, for the way that you meet our needs in such incredible ways. And Father, that we can trust you in everything to do what is best for us. And so, Father, we give these offerings to you. We offer ourselves to you, not just our, what we have. We offer ourselves to you because in giving ourselves to you comes safety. And, Father, we thank you. We praise you. We honor your name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Leaning on the everlasting arms. If you want a, f a place of safety, that's where you need to go. You need to lean on his arms. Let's stand and sing. Please. 
to be leaning on those everlasting arms, safe and secure from all alarms. We're going to have the pastor come forward and read the scripture this morning. Good morning, everyone. It's so good to be with you this morning. And to those who are watching from a distance, it's great to have you with us. If you can turn in your Bibles for the scripture reading today, it's in Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, uh, reading from verses 1 to 9. And just before I read this passage, I'm going to give a very short mini-sermon. I've been thinking this week about the subject of the kingdom of God. And so many people think, e even some believers and Christians and religious groups believe that the kingdom of God is only when we get to heaven. That's the kingdom of God. When we die, we go into the kingdom of God. But the reality is, the wonderful hope is that the kingdom of God is right here and right now. And when we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior, we come in to the kingdom of God. We come into God's family. We come in to the body of Christ. And when we are when we come together, especially on a Sunday morning, and we gather together as his people, we are in God's kingdom. And he speaks to us. And we connect with him and we fellowship with him and we worship him. And when we read his word, his voice speaks to us. He speaks to us through his almighty word, through the holy scriptures. And so that's why, as a church family, we dedicate a certain amount of time every Sunday morning to read the word of God and to have God speak to us through his word. So Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 to 9. It says, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Slaves, obey your earthly masters with respect and fear and with sincerity of heart, just as you would obey Christ. Obey them not only to win favor with the, when their eye is on you, but as slaves of Christ, doing the will of God from your heart. Serve wholeheartedly as if you were serving the Lord, not people, because you know that the Lord will reward each one for whatever good they do, whether they are slave or free. And masters, treat your slaves in the same way. Do not threaten them, since you know that he who is both their master and yours is in heaven, and there is no favoritism with him. May God add the blessing of his word, the reading of his word, and bless uh, it to our hearts this morning. Thank you, Pastor. And we're going to sing about God's faithfulness day by day. And with each passing moment, strength I find to meet my trials here, trusting in the Father's wise bestowment. I have no cause for worry or for fear. And that is the way it is, isn't it, folks? When we're trusting in Him, each and every moment is a new opportunity for us to be blessed. Let's sing it together. Hey. 
And Brock's going to come up now and do our prayer and share time. Thank you, Tom. I want to I want to start by saying how proud I am of Napanee Baptist Church and how it's kept the faith during this time when other churches are simply closed. And uh, I know that we've gone virtual and I know that we can't have a lot of people here on Sunday, but it is still is a blessing. And uh, so I want to thank all the people who are involved in getting this uh, broadcast up every week. Well, times have gotten very tough. Uh, we've gotten people now, both in Canada and the United States, that have, that have strengthened their beliefs much stronger so that they can't talk to each other anymore. And uh, that's not good. So, uh, first thing that I would pray for is, is that people soften their hearts and, and take in what other people believe and say and, uh, you know, work together. We've got much greater goal, you know, than harping on each other. So, they need to work together. We've also got this pandemic that's uh, still killing so many people every day. You know, you watch the news and you kind of get used to, well, you know, in the United States yesterday, there was 4,500 deaths. I mean, 4,500 deaths. I mean, we can't, we cannot get blasé about something like that. And Canada's in a, a situation, of course, we got money, fewer people, but, you know, when you hear and you see that there's, you know, 55 or 65 or 95 deaths, every day you know you you realize that we're in the grip of something here and while the vaccine is coming and we're very very thankful for that uh there's there's issues around <laughs> around the vaccine too which are very perplexing and we think about uh countries who exert their nationalism and say that we're going to take all the vaccine that's made here and nobody else is going to get it. And, you know, that's, that's a situation that we all have to face. And uh, so there's lots to be thankful for, and there's lots to be careful of as well. And so I'm, I guess I started off this morning with the careful part, is to make sure that we're careful, watch our hearts, don't harden our hearts, so that we can be ready to help folks when, when they need them. Um, there's a lot of shut-ins right now. I'm, I'm thinking of the, I'm thinking of the uh, long-term care places where we have people in there who are fragile to start with, otherwise they wouldn't be there. And now they can't see their family. They don't know what's going on in many cases. They can't understand why they can't meet with their friends why they have to stay isolated. And uh, so I would, I would hope that we would pray for those people this morning. And I hope that they're able to see this, this message as well, so that they know that they're being watched over by the, the great counselor, the great healer. And I would ask that you, you be with the families that are losing folks and not being able to see them go. I can't think of anything worse. And uh, I mean, when I lost my dad, I was right there, right there at the moment that he passed. And it was a blessing for me. I never forget it. And uh, whereas my mother passed and I couldn't be there. And it's a two totally different experiences. And I know everybody's gone through that. But, you know, think about that. Now, nobody can see somebody pass. And, uh, but you know, we're still very, very lucky to have what we have. We have places to live. We have food in our fridge. We have 
ways of communicating with others to stay in touch. And we are blessed that way. So, and those are the, really the points I wanted to make this morning. So let's, let's bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, we know that this pandemic is not of our doing. And so we know that there's a test here. We know that you have a plan for us and for the world that includes this pandemic. And while we may not understand it, nor are we expected to understand it, we know that your plan will see its way through to the end. And so in the meantime, Lord, I would ask that you please be with those folks that are in the long-term care and retirement homes that are experiencing incredible loneliness at the moment. They can't see their family, they can't touch their family, and uh, so they can only talk to them on the phone or you know, uh, talk to them on the computer. And uh, they're finding that very, very tough. And just that uh, isolation and that loneliness, Lord, we ask that you please be with them. Let them know that they're not alone, that you are with them, and that you will see them through to the end. We know that families are not allowed to be with their, their folks when they pass, and that can be a frightening experience for the person who is dying. But let them know that you're there and that you're holding their hand and that you're with them. And so they're really not alone. They have you to help them over. I'd ask the people please be thankful for all of the gifts that you have bestowed upon them. And while life is tough, it's not unlivable. And that's because of you. So we thank you for that. And uh, we appreciate that and we worship you for that. Um, I would ask that you please, please work with folks to, to soften their hearts, soften their positions so that they are more inclined to take a look at folks who have a different idea and see if we can't find a way to work together. We're so polarized at the moment and there must be a reason for it. Otherwise, we wouldn't be. So I'd ask that you please work with folks so that they can get the jobs done that they need to do, especially in government. And so I would ask these things in the name of our precious Lord and Savior, our Jesus Christ. Amen. Hello again, everyone. It's uh, great to be gathered together as God's people. And uh, we are... Glad to be able, as Brock mentioned, to continue our services in this way, virtually, even though we have only a few people in attendance. It's wonderful to be able to continue. And we haven't really, I was thinking, we haven't really missed a beat since all of this started uh, in March of last year. And uh, it's wonderful to be able to continue on and to keep worshiping God in any way we can can. And so we're really happy to be together. I'm glad that you're with us this morning, uh, either virtually or here at church. So if you can turn in your Bibles to the book of Exodus, chapter 20 and verse 12, and we're going to be continuing our series on the Ten Commandments that we started a few weeks ago. So the commandments are in Exodus chapter 20, and we're going to be looking at the fifth commandment. Uh, and it says here in verse 12, this fifth commandment, it says, Honor your father and mother so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. And the Apostle Paul, from the scripture reading that I read in Ephesians chapter 6, he elaborates a little bit on this commandment, and he says it in a slightly different way. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 2, the Apostle Paul says this, Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment, with a promise, so that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. 
Well, there's an old German fable about a family with two children and an elderly grandfather. And after a while, the grandfather wasn't able to eat very well at the table and he would drop his food and he would make a bit of a mess. So at first the husband and wife scolded him and then they made him sit in a corner by himself. But he continued to make a mess in the corner. So then they decided to take away his fork and knife and they brought in a trough from the barn so the grandfather would have to eat his food like an animal just with his mouth and fingers but after a while one day the parents just happened to be looking out the window and they saw their two children playing outside and they noticed that they had some tools and some wood and a hammer and nails and so the parents went outside and they asked the kids what they were building what they were doing and the son and daughter stopped and they both turned to their parents and they said oh we're just building you a trough for when you get old <laughs> and when we think of this commandment of honoring our parents it's really a principle that is not just with parents. I, I would say that this is a general truth, a general principle about honoring people who are in authority over us. That's what I would say. And if we don't honor our parents early on, we're not going to honor other authorities. Um, and really, when we think of this particular aspect of treating your parents with respect, it's a really a principle that is reflected in almost every culture and every civilization that has ever existed throughout history. Even in societies that had never heard about the Ten Commandments, honoring your elders from ancient times to today has been a universally recognized principle that children should honor and respect their parents. Even very pagan societies practice this. It's built into the fabric of every society, ancient Greece, Asia, Africa, the Western world, South America, everywhere you go, children are naturally expected to honor their parents. I remember when we lived in South Korea in 2002, we noticed that Korean parents took really good care of their oldest son and they made sure that he had a good education and that he would eventually get a good job. Why? Because Korea doesn't have a government pension plan or a welfare system. And as you get older, and if you run into hard times, your oldest son is expected to honor you and take care of you and have you come and stay at his house and he'll provide for your needs. And that same idea of honoring your parents in Korea, it even spilled over to the school system. And I know I've mentioned this before, but when I first started teaching in Korea, students would actually come up to my desk and bow down to me as they were handing in their homework assignments. Can you believe that? We would almost laugh at something like that today in Canada when we see the lack of respect and the lack of honoring people in North American society when it comes to, especially when it comes to parents and authority figures and parental figures like teachers or police or, uh, and in our modern culture, when we think back, it wasn't that long ago that we had shows on TV like Leave it to Beaver or the Andy Griffith show and they used to be our examples and our models for how we treated our parents. Now we have Beavis and Butthead and the Simpsons and even worse. The Bible actually says that disobedience to parents will be one of the signs of the end times. And maybe you can turn to 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 3, 2 Timothy chapter 3. Verses 1 and 2. It says, but mark this. There will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents. Kind of sounds familiar, doesn't it? 
And I believe that this is such an important topic today, especially when we see God's original design, especially for the parental relationship, children and parents. And now we look around, we see the traditional family breaking down and falling apart. We need now more than ever to study God's word and to find out what he has to say about this issue. There's an old saying that says, before I got married, I had six theories about bringing up children. Now that I have six children, I don't have any theories. <laughs> That's why we need God's help. Amen. Amen. And especially with all the pressure out there from our world today to, to change some of these old archaic ideas of children respecting their parents. We need to get back to his way and his law and find out what God's solution is and what his design is and what his remedy is for what's happening in our world and what's happening to the modern family today. And when we examine this fifth commandment, we'll see that God has a lot to say because I believe it's all related. Like I said earlier, any kind of respect for authority, whether it's honoring our government leaders or leaders in the church, or like we said, police or teachers or bosses, and especially when it comes to honoring God, it all starts with respecting and honoring our parents because it starts in the home. If that mindset and that reverence starts at an early age, then it's going to spread to the rest of society. That's God's plan. That's his design. And it's interesting that the first four commandments talked about honoring God and then honoring his name and then honoring his day and now honoring the people who God has given us to train us and raise us up to honor him. It's all connected. If you have a disposition of honoring your parents and not resisting and not rebelling and not despising them, then it's going to be so much easier to honor God or to honor any other authority. So you might be thinking today, well, this commandment is kind of narrow. It's just for uh, parents or parents raising kids or for kids who, who have parents who haven't passed away. No, this is a general principle. This is for all of us. It's all about honoring. And so what I'd like us to do now is we're just going to go through uh, this little commandment and we're going to ask four questions about why it's so important to honor parents and why God included this as one of his absolute eternal objective laws. So number one, first of all, the first question I'd like to ask here is what is the obligation in this commandment? What is this fifth commandment calling us to do, really? What obligation do we have to our parents or to any authority to honor them? So the first obligation I have here, there's a few, three, is to respect their position. God says we're obligated to do that from the get-go. You know, the, the old thinking is, well, people have to earn my respect. Uh, that's partly true, but here's the idea. We are obligated right from the very beginning. Leviticus 19 verse 3 says, each of you must respect his mother and father. There's a must in that verse. And that should be our underlying disposition and our underlying attitude. It's not, oh yeah, well, we will wait until they earn our respect or, uh, you, you, you know, let's just wait and see. No, initial respect comes with the territory. It comes with the position. And this doesn't just mean with, with words, but with our our attitudes and our body language and our whole demeanors. I remember when I taught high school, I know Brock could relate to this. A lot of times kids will be nodding in agreement and yet rolling their eyes and uh, giving you body language where you know their attitude is 
somewhere down in the dump somewhere. And like we, we, we said, in our culture today, we have lost so much of that kind of respect that we're talking about. We don't automatically respect people in authority positions anymore. Instead, we automatically despise them. We want to stick it to them instead of submitting to them. And we've all been conditioned by our culture in that way to do that. And I, I remember so many of my challenges as a high school teacher was to uh, deal with kids who had that underlying attitude problem. And you see that in churches, you see that with adults too. Uh, it's, it's underlying, it's a way of acting and thinking. Instead of respecting, there's a, a way of despising and resisting and rebelling against authority. And I believe it starts in the home with children being obligated to respect their parents. And they're trained up that way and the, the church reinforces that and the parents and the extended family reinforces that. The Bible tells us that we must do that. We are obligated to respect that position. Then the second obligation we have is to love and value our parents. The word honor in this commandment here lit literally means to esteem and value as precious. Giving somebody honor goes beyond just respecting their position. It's more about a heart attitude. And especially with parents, it's about loving them and empathizing with them and appreciating them and valuing them and having an emotional connection. Proverbs 23, verse 26 says, My son, give me your heart. That's pretty straightforward. Give me your heart. Then Proverbs 31, 28 talks about children rising up in the morning and calling their mother blessed. There's an emotional connection. There's a deep love there. The very last words of the Old Testament in the book of Malachi, it talks about turning the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of their children to their fathers. It's where your heart's at. Uh, so there's a very important connection here between respecting the position, yes, and, and then loving and valuing and appreciating that person. If you have an underlying respect for the position, it'll be so much easier to love and appreciate the person. And to make it more personal, people coming into, new people coming into a church, if you have that disposition of respecting the, the position of leadership or of pastor, it'll be so more, it, much easier to love me and to appreciate me and value me and it would be the same with me. Uh, it's very much connected. And of course, the other side is, of course, we live in a fallen world. And so often people in authority, they sin and they mess up. And we hear about that all the time, even in religious circles about people misusing their position. Parents sin. They sometimes even abuse their children and do terrible things. We recognize that. We understand that to a certain extent. And of course, in those instances, it's hard to respect the position. But that's where the heart connection and the heart attitude comes in, where God helps us to still see them as our parents and to forgive them and reconcile and move on. And then the third obligation, of course, is for children to submit to their parents and obey them and listen to them and uh, follow what they're being told to do. The scripture reading in uh, Ephesians 6 verse 1 says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord. Why? For this is right. It says, it's just the right thing to do. Proverbs 1 verses 8 and 9 says, My son, listen to your father's instruction and do not forsake your mother's teaching. They will be a garland to grace your head and a chain to adorn your neck. 
And I, I love this paraphrase that I read about that verse in Proverbs. It says this, My son, listen to your father's instruction. Don't ever turn away from your mother's teaching, for their words are like a precious crown upon your head, like trophies you can wear around your neck. My daughter, you also listen to your father's instruction. Don't ever turn away from your mother's teaching, for their words are like flowers in your hair, like a beautiful necklace worn close to your heart. I really like those words. I like that. We're obligated to listen to our parents because so often, and we, as we get older, we realize this, those words from your parents and the advice and the instruction that they give you starts to sink in when you get to be about 65 or six, no just kidding <laughs> and those flowers start to bloom and that crown that they gave you becomes more precious and you start thinking so that's what my old dad was saying that's what he meant a way back when that's what my mom was trying to say you know, there's that old saying, I think I've shared it before. It says, as I got older, my parents got so much smarter. And as time goes on, their words will help us. They will adorn us. They will bless us. So those are the three obligations when it comes to this commandment. To respect our parents' position, then to honor them and love them and appreciate them as people and hold them close and have a heart connection with them and then to submit and listen to them and obey their instruction. And since we're talking here about children being obligated to honor and respect their parents, then the natural flip side is that parents, of course, have an obligation too. And Paul talks about that in the book of Ephesians. Obviously, parents are obligated to help their children keep this commandment and not hinder that or prevent that or frustrate that. Someone has said, you can't change your ancestors, but you can do something about your descendants. So as parents, how do we help our children to honor us? and respect us and keep this fifth commandment. We really have three obligations as well as parents. So first of all, the Bible talks a lot about teaching our kids and instructing them in the ways of the Lord. That's the starting point. That's our first obligation as parents. Talk to our kids about God. Tell them about the gospel. Talk to them about the ways of God and the laws of God. Deuteronomy, a very famous verse Deuteronomy 6 verse 7 says impress them on your children meaning impress on your children God's commandments it says talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road when you lie down and when you get up so that's the bottom line if we want our kids to honor us and treat us properly then we need to be telling them about God's ways and God's love and his standards and his values and his priorities and in order to do that we ourselves need to know them and we need to be walking in God's way and growing in our faith and knowing about God's ways in order to pass them on and then the second obligation we have as parents not just to teach our kids but to discipline them and I know in our modern world that's kind of a foreign concept that's gone out the window and there's always a fear of too much punishment or too much discipline and uh, being abusive. And that has caused a lot of parents to go the other extreme and be too permissive and too passive. But God talks a lot about discipline. Proverbs 22 verse 6 says, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not turn from it. Proverbs also says, a child left to himself disgraces his mother. And then it says, discipline your son and he will give you peace and bring to light, delight to your soul. So teach them and then discipline them. And then the third obligation we have as parents is not to frustrate our kids. If we want them to honor us, we need to not frustrate them or exasperate them. That's what Ephesians talks about. Don't exasperate or embitter your children, Paul says. 
And the word exasperate literally means to frustrate them or provoke them to anger. So those are all the obligations for both children and parents in this fifth commandment. Children are obligated to respect their parents' position and love them from their hearts and honor and obey and submit to their instruction. And then parents have an obligation to teach their kids and discipline them and not embitter or frustrate them. So that's the answer to our first question. What's the obligation in this fifth commandment? Well, now we come to the second question, and that's what's the motivation? Why is this commandment so important? Why should I be motivated to keep it? Why should I bother? Well, I found a number of reasons from Scripture for why we should be motivated to, again, not just to honor our parents, but people in authority. The first reason is that the Bible says it's the right thing to do. Ephesians 6, verse 1, that I already quoted, says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. There's a right way and a wrong way. And then Proverbs 23, 22 says, Listen to your father who gave you life, and do not despise your mother when she is old. Meaning we owe our parents our very lives. They brought us up. They brought us into the world. They raised us. They sacrificed for us. It's not rocket science to honor and respect them. It's the natural thing to do. It's the right thing to do. Then another reason is because it pleases God. It's the right thing to do, but it also pleases God. Colossians 3.20 says, Children, obey your parents and everything, for this pleases the Lord. So you're not just obeying or honoring your parents to please them, you're ultimately doing it to please God. And that should be our motivation. And another reason is because it teaches us to respect all types of authority, like we've mentioned already. Romans 13, 1 to 2 says, Everyone must submit himself to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. And when we think of this pandemic right now, we have had to submit to the governing authorities. And even in Christian circles, there's been lots of controversy. And, of course, Scripture tells us that there's a point where you have to choose between serving God and serving man. But there is an underlying principle that we need to submit to our governing authorities uh, to a certain extent. And uh, because they've been established by God. And consequently, the one who rebels against that authority is rebelling against what God has instituted. And those uh, who do so will bring judgment on themselves, Scripture says. The idea here is if you respect your parents' authority, you'll obvious, obviously respect other kinds. And like we said already, your governing authorities and your teachers and your pastors and your bosses, and especially God's authority. So the... So those are the three motivations. The fourth motivation or the fourth reason to follow this commandment is because if we honor our parents, the Bible says that we'll gain wisdom and, and we'll be protected. The book of Proverbs is, is all about that. Uh, we will gain wisdom and understanding if we do what God says, especially in regard to our parents. Proverbs 6.20 says, My son, keep your father's commands and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Bind them upon your heart forever. Fasten them around your neck. When you walk, they will guide you. When you sleep, they will watch over you. When you awake, they will speak to you. And Proverbs 4, 1 to 4, I'm quoting a lot of Proverbs because I'm reading through the book of Proverbs during my devotions. Proverbs 4, 1 to 4 says, Listen, my sons, to a father's instruction, pay attention and gain understanding. I give you sound learning, so do not forsake my teaching. And then that verse also says, When I was a boy in my father's house, still tender, and an only child of my mother, he taught me and said, Lay hold of my words with all your heart, keep my commands, and you will live. So this is the idea of 
your parents passing on wisdom that will help you along the way, and especially in the Christian context, and giving you guidance and direction in your life that will protect you and keep you on the straight and narrow and keep you safe, protect you from making wrong choices. You know, I look back over my life when I was a teenager and I would remember my dad trying to tell me something and trying to give me some heads up and some wisdom and some insight and I'd be there going, yeah, 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 yeah. And now I catch myself telling my kids the very same things. And what do they do? They go, yeah, 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 right? That's just old dad talking. So that's the motivation here for keeping this fifth commandment. Honor your parents because the Bible says it's simply the right thing to do. And then because it pleases God. And then because it teaches us to respect other kinds of authority. And then because it protects us. And it gives us wisdom and understanding for making the right choices in life. There's a plan and a design and a blueprint here. And then we come to the third question we're going to ask, and that's, what's the consequence here in this commandment? Why is the fifth commandment so critical and so vital when it comes to the survival of the family, when it comes to having a functional home life? So here are some consequences for the family when we honor our parents. For parents, the Bible says it's the difference between joy and grief. Proverbs 10 verse 1 says, A wise son brings joy to his father, but a foolish son brings grief to his mother. Micah 7 verse 6 says, For a son dishonors his father, a daughter rises up against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's enemies are the members of his own household. Talk about grief. Meaning if we don't honor our parents, instead of joy, we'll have grief. Instead of harmony, we'll have friction. Instead of life in our relationships, we'll have death. That's the fallout. And we see that all over the place in our culture today. Those are the consequences for not keeping the fifth commandment. And of course, we see dysfunction in our world, uh, intergenerational dysfunction, simply because families haven't followed God's way and they've gone their own way. So we've talked about the obligation for keeping the commandment. As children, we're obligated to respect our parents' position give, and give them love and honor and appreciation and then obey and submit to them. And then as parents, we have the obligation to teach our kids and train them and discipline them and help them to keep this commandment, not to frustrate or embitter or exasperate them. And then we talked about the motivation. We should be motivated to follow this commandment because it's the right thing to do. It pleases God, it teaches us respect for other kinds of authority, and if we listen to our parents, we'll have that wisdom and that insight that we'll get from them to protect us and give us guidance and direction that we need in our lives. And then we talked about consequences. There will definitely be consequences for our families depending on what we do with this commandment. There will either be joy or grief, pain or sorrow, harmony or friction. And then we come to the fourth question here, and that's this question. What's the promise? We looked at the consequences. What's the promise? Because Paul talks about in Ephesians, it's the one commandment with a promise. What's the promise? What's the blessing for keeping this commandment? In verse 12 of our passage, it says, Honor your father and your mother so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. And in uh, Deuteronomy, there's another similar verse, chapter 5 of Deuteronomy, verse 16. It says, Honor your father and your mother as the Lord your God has commanded you so that you may live long and that it may go well with you in the land the Lord your God is giving you. Very similar. So what's the connection between honoring your parents and living a long life or living a good life in the land? We can't relate to that too well in our situation, going into the promised land. But what's he talking about? What's God talking about here? 
And then, uh, like we read before in Ephesians uh, chapter 6, verses 2 and 3, Paul says, Honor in your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, that it may go well with you, and that you may enjoy a long life on the earth. Well, what's the idea? Well, life is better and more fulfilling and more worth living and more enjoyable if you honor your parents. That's the bottom line. If you, do, if you do, if you follow this command, if you follow God's design, then you'll inv avoid the dangers and the fallout and the consequences and the stresses that family conflict and family disputes bring that can eat away at you and destroy you and even shorten your life. And there's also the idea here that we started out with my little story about the trough and the grandfather. The way you treat your parents is the way your kids are going to treat you. Guaranteed. And like we said before, and especially in ancient cultures, as you got older, you were completely dependent on your kids to take care of you. So if you set the example in the home by honoring your parents, then your kids would come along and honor you and follow that example. And they would take care of you and you'd have a long life. You wouldn't be sitting out on the street somewhere begging. That's the wonderful promise here. That's the long-term blessing in keeping this commandment. And we sang that song, May all who come behind us find us faithful. I really love that. I really like that. The promise is that it doesn't just affect you. It gets passed on to the next generation. And of course, for all of these commandments, we need to remember that we can't keep any of them on our own. We can't do it in our own strength. That's what Jesus talked a lot about. We all fail. We don't have that kind of righteousness on our own to keep all the Ten Commandments. We all come up short. That's why we need God's help. We need His Spirit. We need His forgiveness and His salvation and His healing touch, both as parents and as children, to keep this commandment. But what a wonderful truth that we have as believers today is that Jesus gives us the perfect example, the perfect model of honoring His Father. Jesus fulfills all of God's commandments. He keeps them perfectly, especially this one. And He went all the way to the cross to save us from our sins. And all we have to do is turn from ourselves, turn from our sin, put our faith in Him, and trust Him. And once we've done that, then we can continually ask Him for help, especially when it comes to honoring parents who maybe don't deserve a lot of honor, or honoring people in places of authority who don't deserve a lot of respect. May God help all of us this morning to keep our eyes on Jesus, on our perfect model, our perfect example, and to strive in His strength, through His Spirit, by His Spirit, to live up to this standard and to be the parents and the citizens and the church members and the people and the children that God wants us to be. Amen? amen. And amen. Let's pray together in closing. Father, we come before you now and we thank you. We praise you for your word. And we thank you that here and now we are in the kingdom of God and you speak to us through your holy word. Not just every Sunday, but throughout the week when we come to you and we fellowship with you, we commune with you, you fill us with your word and your ways and your designs. And Lord, we thank you for this commandment. We thank you for this principle that we've been looking at this morning. Because as fallen people, as sinners, we are prone to rebel. We are prone to resist any kind of authority. And we need your help. We need your deliverance. We need your strength. 
And Lord, I just would pray for anyone watching the service this morning. There might be someone who has never come to Christ, never put their faith in Jesus as their savior. And I would pray that you would speak to that person's heart, that you would reveal yourself, that they would get into your word, that they would see you as the living Lord, the living God, and you would speak to them and they would put their faith in Jesus Christ alone. And they would find this help that we're talking about here. Lord, we just pray now for our church family as we've been thinking this morning. This has been a hard time with this pandemic, but we know that we're going through this for a reason, that this is a test. Help each one of us, Lord, to keep looking to you and deriving our strength from you, not just in the area of honoring uh, people in authority, but in just trusting you and realizing that you have a plan and a purpose in all of this. Lord, we pray that you would unite our family, our church family together, that you would give us your wisdom and direction and understanding as we look to the future and as we trust you and we give our lives and our hearts to you daily and as we see your kingdom come and we see your, your will done here in our midst. And so Lord, we commit ourselves to you now. I ask a blessing on each one who's watching and may you be our portion and our strength every day. And we give ourselves to you now in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen and amen. Amazing. Isn't it wonderful that God has given us the ability to do this? through Jesus Christ, as we rely on his strength, as we re rely on the Holy Spirit that lives within us, we are able to do this. And we are able to be blessed. Amen. I mean, that's amazing. God not only gives us the commandments, he gives us the strength to fulfill them through Jesus Christ. And uh, another, just another reason to be so glad that we are in the family uh, of God. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love. The fellowship of kindred minds is like to that above. Let's stand and sing. Blessed be the tie that binds. us a new ability and he transforms us into the image of his one and only son.
to be brought into the image of the one whom we love so that we can love just like him. And this is the time, folks. This is our opportunity to shine. You're dismissed. Mm -hmm.